I told you so. Don't be a bitch, dude. Hold on, let me, let me get let me get my notes up so I'm not forgetting anything that I wanted to say here. All right, so it's official. According to Adrian Wojnarowski, 76 of Sir Joel Embiid will undergo a procedure this week to repair a left meniscus injury, according to the team. A recovery timeline is expected after the procedure, but expectation is that he will miss an extended period of time. A.K.A. he's getting surgery and he's not coming back this season. Um, Here, let, let me just... Because... If I tried to do this off the top of my head, it would just be a mess, and I wouldn't be getting my message across. These retainers are going to have to come out at some point. Oh, God, they are. But first thing I wanted to say is that Shams is not him. Shams is not him because he's being annoying with this whole scenario, okay? So he originally reported on February 1st, I think it was February 1st, that Embiid tore his meniscus. But since then, that tweet has been deleted, and now he's downgraded the injury to a displaced flap in the meniscus. What the hell is even that? Although, that's basically code, a medical code for a meniscus tear. So he was right the first time. I guess he's just been told to dial it back a bit. He's also now reporting that it's going to be a corrective procedure, which corrective procedure is pretty much code again for surgery. So I don't know why he keeps trying to make it light like light-hearted situation like this is serious he's getting a he, he has a torn meniscus and he's getting it surgery for it and he's gonna be out for the rest of the year unless he plans on coming back for the second round which they were probably gonna lose anyway in the second round because that's how it's worked for the past decade it feels like at this point you know without Embiid they're four and ten without Embiid and at this point they'll be like the seventh or eighth seed in which they'll be Facing the Celtics or the Bucks, which is teams that they shouldn't be facing until the second round, at least the second round. And then maybe either team in the conference finals, but they'd be playing them in the first round. Uh, he was leading the league in scoring at like 37 points a game, which is just, I gotta stop hitting my mic like that. Because I know you can hear that. Um, Led the league in scoring, kept the Sixers afloat at around the 3-4 to four seeds, so they were. And now we're going to see... That Embiid really, technically, by definition, is the most play. This is the most valuable player in the NBA, because if you remove him from the Sixers, they're a playing team at best. Now the blame game, my favorite part, the blame game. Hold on, let me let me take my retainers out so I can actually go in on this. What do you mean by that? It's gay. It's super gay. All right, here we get into. We get into the good stuff now. The first order of business is putting blame on the Sixers training staff. The Sixers were in Denver like three, four nights before they were in Golden State. I think it was a Saturday night game and they played Golden State on a Tuesday. Uh, Not on the injury report whatsoever before the game until 15 minutes prior, the Sixers just decided, he's not feeling good tonight. We don't like what we're seeing. We're going to put him on the injury report even though there's no injury to be reported on. We're not liking what we're seeing here in Denver. Maybe it's because of the high altitude, which don't even get me started on that. So, okay, that's fine. You arrest him. You got fined for $75,000. Should have been $76,000 just to be petty because 76ers, I'm funny. Girl, shut the fuck up. You bought you eight. <laughs> Bitch, you bought you eight. But you got fined $75,000 for not having him on the injury report prior to the game. And then they said, you know what? He's playing a meaningless game on a Tuesday night in Golden State. We'll play him. Now reports are coming out that Embiid only played in Golden State because of the feedback or criticism he got on social media and by media members because he sat out in Denver for like the 15,000th time and he hasn't played in Denver since 2019. So, you know what? For forget the order of business. The Sixers training staff is stupid because I'm watching the Warriors game, right? I'm a Warriors fan wrong way evidently i'm what i'm literally witnessing him fly himself across the court and just fall down the guy can't jump without hurting something i went i watched him go up for a block he barely got off the ground and then landed and then fell immediately to his knees they i don't remember what quarter that was in. i think it was like early in the second quarter you should have just took it taken him out there period I don't know if he was on a minute restriction in that game either. It doesn't matter. You should have taken him out, taken him out as soon as you saw that. Clearly, the guy's not healthy enough to be on the court if he's just falling down like that. And he's already injured again. He's limping into the locker room at halftime. 
Comes up the second half. Ah, he's fine. Play him. He is clearly not fine. And then you got the coach, Nick Nurse, coming out here. Oh, it wasn't the same knee that was bothering him. It doesn't matter because he shouldn't have been out there anyway. So now you got to go out there without him for the rest of the regular season because you wanted to be stubborn, which, oh, that leads me great segue into my next part. I feel like Nick Nurse is playing Embiid way too much. I think he's playing like 36, 38 minutes a night. And he hasn't taken, he hasn't, other than being actually injured, like there is no rest games, which I think he should be having. Like, I'm not saying it should be resting like every third, fourth game, but give him a rest day, especially, if, or bring his minutes down to like 30. This guy's like 260 pounds, seven foot two tall. You can't just play him 40 minutes a night like he's prime LeBron James in 2017. I'd put maybe 10% of the blame on the coaching staff including the head coach. I put 90% of it on Joel Embiid himself. First of all, and here we go. You're Joel Embiid. You are a multi-hundred millionaire. You make hundreds of millions of dollars. You're richer than 99% of anybody who says anything about you, including me. You're a multi-millionaire. You just scored 70 points. You lead the league in scoring. You're averaging like 36.5 points a game, which is, we haven't seen that since like Harden in 2018. And we know how that ended, MVP. You're the reigning NBA MVP. And you have a, you have a wife and kids. You have a good family. Why are you even, why at all? Are you concerned or worried about what Timothy, the college dropout Timothy, who works minimum wage at Walmart, has to say about you on Twitter or Instagram? Why are you worried about that? You know you're not healthy enough to play in Golden State, but you're like, oh, well, you know, Jonathan said something about me at, uh, while he was on break uh, on Twitter. So I guess I got to go out there. What do you make? Make it make sense. All the people who were making fun of Embiid and saying he was ducking Jokic for not playing in Denver, uh, uh, you should feel sh uh, you should feel ashamed of yourself. No, I shouldn't. First of all, that's a fair criticism to make. The guy hasn't played a game in Denver since 2019. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And he just came out. He was like a game separated from a 70 point game. He was not injured unless he got injured in the game between the Spurs game and the Nuggets game. I don't even, I think they played like Indiana and they lost that game. Why was, if he got injured in that game, okay, fine. You got me fine. Prove me wrong. Why was he not on the injury report then until 15 minutes before the game started? And then you got people, you got, you got other people who say, oh, well, it's not his fault. You know, maybe the team saw something that they didn't like. Maybe, you know, they didn't like how he was breathing in the altitude in Denver. So maybe he just can't play in Denver. Using that as an excuse as not to play in Denver. Okay, so what if we got a situation where the two best players in the NBA, arguably, Embiid and Jokic, actually both got their team to the finals and Embiid had to play in the finals in Denver. What, would he just not play in the finals because he doesn't do well in altitude? Well, then we got a bigger problem than him not being able to... Than, than, than him being injured. If you made it to the finals against the Nuggets, you'd be cooked because your star player can't play because of the altitude. Yet, you know... In freaking December and January. Every season, the Sixers fans are so hyped. Oh, it's our year. It's our year. No, it's not. Because every single season, I've said this so many times. I've said it so many times. And every single time, I'm right. The guy, it's not if the guy will get injured. It's a matter of when. Every single season, he's in the NBA. It's a story of, is Embiid going to play tonight? Is Embiid going to play tonight? How's Embiid's knee feeling? How's Embiid's nose feeling? How's Embiid's face feeling? How's his cheek? How's his arm? How's his elbow? How's his shoulder? Something. It's something with this guy. It's always something. And it's always, oh, well, let's see how well he recovered before the playoffs start. Every single time. And now the guy's not going to even play in the playoffs because they're going like, to get eliminated in the play-in. And then people are people, people trying to get mad at me. Oh, well, you know, it's our year. And Beats not going to get injured this year. Oh, it's our year. I'm telling you right now. It's a different aura. It's a different aura. I can feel something different with this team. No, you can't. You know Embiid's going to get injured. You just know it's going to happen. It's a given. I don't think he's gone at NBA season without getting, without getting without having an injured playoff run. The Sixers should listen to what I told them to do, which is trade Embiid while his value is high, while his value is still high, to a team that will give you young assets that you need. Trade him and build around Tyrese Maxey. Build around him. Get a young center. Get a young uh, big piece. And then get other young pieces to build around. And then also picks. Because, look. 
Every single season, it's the same thing. Oh my God, it's our year. It's our year. And then Joel Embiid gets injured. It's the same thing. But yet, Sixers fans in the front office would be like, oh, well, you know, we didn't have a good coach. It's the coach. It's Brett Brown. It's James Harden. It's Ben Simmons. It's Tobias Harris. It's Doc Rivers. It's da 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 It's everything else except the fact that, look, maybe Embiid is just injured. And that's why you're losing. Maybe it's not because Ben Simmons passed the ball for a possession. Maybe that's not why. Maybe it's not because James Harden fell in, fell off in the playoffs again like he always did. You knew it was going to happen when you signed him because that's just the story of his career. Just like how Embiid getting injured for the playoffs is the story of his career. It's a given. It's going to happen. Oh, my God. It's Brett Brown. Oh, my God. It's Ben Simmons. It's Harden. It's Tobias Harris. It's Doc Rivers. It's the no, 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 no. It's everybody else but Joel Embiid who's been this. He's been the only. Co- Notice. Notice how for all of these playoff runs. We went through two different coaches, Ben Simmons, James Harden, Tobias Harris, who's still there for some reason, I don't know. But the only constant through all of these playoff losses is Joel Embiid and his injuries. That's the only constant. So, and so you keep trying to build around him. And I get it because he's an MVP. He's a great player. But he's the only constant piece that's been a problem consistently. So why do you think all of a sudden you can just get around that? You can't get around that. Oh, also, I forgot to make this point. The Sixers are 4-10 and ten without Embiid this far into the season. Um, that's without saying the Sixers have, according to ESPN, strength of schedule. The Sixers have had the second easiest schedule in the entire league. Out of all 30 teams in the NBA, the Sixers have had the second easiest record in the NBA. Or the second easiest schedule in the NBA. Only ahead of the Wizards. Anyways, this is already like a 30 minute video to edit. I just wanted to get this stuff off my chest real quick before trade deadline and i guess i'm gonna make a trade deadline uh video about the sixers i guess i i don't know but joel Embiid just uh sixers need to trade them in the off season just get rid of that get a few young pieces i'd say honestly if they don't make any moves at the trade deadline which i feel like is inevitable at this point they're not really gonna make any trades at the deadline at this point you tank you see what happens the first seven, ten games after the All Star break, and then I don't know, but if you tank at this point, you're still too good to tank. So the Sixers are screwed. Essentially, is what I'm saying. The Sixers are screwed again because Joel Embiid can't stay injured. That's the story of his career. That's the story of the process, which failed a long time ago. But they're still trying to fix it, I guess. Um, yeah, I was right. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you.